Hi, my name is Hanser from Team Solo Mid, and this is my basic champion guide to Ramus. So, Ramus is good in solo queue just because his laning phase is really hard to abuse. He doesn't have that many weaknesses, it's just because he builds pure tank, and if he builds like a straight armor against an AD champ, it's gonna be really hard for the AD champ to ever snowball on him. Because of that, he has actually pretty good wave clear with his W and ulti, so he can just clear the wave and then run across the map and make some plays. Or he can abuse land pretty hard, because if a jungler comes, he has a lot of CC to follow up or to initiate the gank, and it'll be really easy to kill the enemy champion, especially if they're squishy. If they're more tank, then you just play to farm and just roam across the map and make plays. For laning phase on Remus, if you're against a melee matchup, you can trade autos early just because you have more armor and you have the thorns from your W. Especially against melee matchups, you can pressure them early with your autos and you won't get punished for it at all, so you can push in really far. But you have to be careful of the jungler if they come, then you're going to be quite vulnerable and your lane will be in a bad position. Uh, against range matchups, it's usually a lot harder because he doesn't have any super good like gap closer early along in the lane. So you have to just take the lane slowly and make sure you can get enough farm to get uh, good backs. If you can just farm under tower until you have a few items, then you'll be really strong. The goal on Ramus is pretty much to get to level 6 where you have your ulti, because your ulti is such a good wave clearing tool, Ramus doesn't have like that many options in lane, other than just farming or going for an all-in. Ramus is really strong in team fights, especially if they have a lot of auto-attacking champions, and if they don't have like a lot of CC. If he's able to get onto the backline, almost guaranteed one-shot him with Thornmail and Sunfire. And if they have like a lot of ranged champions, I think that's actually not bad for Ramus because if he ever gets in on the range champions, just like with a good flank, then he can pressure them a lot and zone the backline really far. And usually you just want to aim for the backline, don't want to really go for the frontline because your taunt's on a pretty long cooldown. So you just want to zone with your powerball, try to look for flanks, and then try to initiate onto the backline. And if your team has no initiation, you kind of just want to push side waves out and then rotate to the fight. You always want to try to get a good flank on the backline, just running at the enemies up ahead or up front just isn't really efficient and you can get poked a lot. So for tips on Ramus, a really important tool that everyone should use on Ramus, especially in team fights, is that you can powerball and then flash onto someone. It'll get the instant stun and then you can follow up with your own instant taunt. I think that's a really good combo because it just allows you to instantly get on the back line and they really can't have any reaction to it unless they predict it and it's really hard to predict. If you taunt a target and you die, the taunt will not work anymore. If you're like near death and you want to like try to get a CC on someone, you really shouldn't go for it because if you die anyways, you're just going to give them a free kill. You're not going to get the CC off, so make sure you uh, look out for that. For runes on Ramus, I like to run attack speed reds, health per level yellows, scaling CDR blues, and armor points. I don't think going flighty reds, just flat armor seals, flat MR, uh, glyphs, and attack speed quints is very efficient because those are really only for early game stats and if you just get scaling CDR and scaling HP and just flat armor for early game then it'd be just as good off early and then you'll scale better into late game. On Ramus I like to go 12018 and for the Frosty Tree I like to get Fury uh, just because attack speed is really nice on Ramus. Uh, Feast is really good for landing phase. Natural Talent because you're not going to really spell vamp or lifesteal at all so getting more damage is always better. And Oppressor is really good because whoever you're gonna go on in fights is always gonna be CC'd, so you just always do more damage. And in the Resolve Tree, I like to go Unyielding just because your W gives you a lot of flat resists, and this will increase that too. Um, Explorer is really good for just roaming around the map and being there faster and be able to engage faster. I like Veteran Scars over Rudic Armor because you don't really have that many shields or healing on your on the Kit, so getting flat HP is better for early lane. Inside's better than Perseverance just because TP is such a valuable summer spell and Flash is also really good. Swiftness is just really strong against anyone who can kite you and Undying Grasp is better than the other two. For early skiller on Ramus, I like to get W at level 1, Q at level 2, depending on the matchup, W at level 3 or E, and then at level 4 you get the other one. So you have all four skills, and then you want to max W first, and then E second, just so you have longer CC. And then max Q last, and ulti whenever you can. 
for starting items on Remus, you almost always want to go either Doran Shield or Corrupting Potion, just because uh, both of them gives you a lot of sustain in lane, and Corrupting Potion will do more damage, but Doran Shield is just safer for lane, and you take less harass. After that, you want to rush a Thorn Mill pretty much, especially if their enemy team has a lot of AD. If uh, your matchup is like more caster based and you need to just wave clear, you can get a Sunfire first too, that's fine. But you also need to get Thorn Mill second and make sure you have those two core because those are your main damage sources and your main like armor sources as well. And after that, if you need MR, you can build like an Abyssal or something just to do more damage or get like a Banner of Command if you really want to like pressure the map. Um, anything's fine really, like Spirit Visage or Banshees. And after that, for your third armor item, you want to get an Iceborne. Iceborne's just really strong and you're stacking a lot of armor and you get a lot of armor from your W, so the proc from Iceborne is going to be a really big slow and that's just really useful in team fights. Also the CDR is really nice, it just allows you to uh, taunt more often, use W more often, use Q more often. For boots, I think the best kind of boots are either Swifties or Ninja Tabby, just because Ninja Tabby gives you more armor, which means more damage. And if you're against a lot of AD champions, it's really good for reducing the damage. And Swifties is really good just for being around the map, being really annoying. And the movement speed is really good in team fights because uh, you're not going to get kited as much because you have slow resist and you can get onto the backline faster. Last item, it's really dependent on the situation. You can get more HP with like a Randuin or you can get Deadman's Play. It really isn't that big of a difference. You can get GA2, it's anything is fine really. Thanks for watching this basic champion guide. Make sure to check out the rest of the guides over at lowclass.com.